Morning, Dave. Welcome Morning, Dave. back Thank to uh, Box to the Battlefield. Um, our vignette has now been finished, as we all know. But um, I just wanted to show our viewers about 18 months of uh, of what we've been doing uh, on our own, not not on video. Uh, this one isn't quite finished yet, but um, just talk about vignettes for a minute. And sure. I, I think the, um, it's just a nicer way to display your models in your cabinets. It's it's uh, shows a little bit of a, a theater of war that they, they that these particular vehicles fought in, and it's colorful in your cabinets. And it's um, <clears throat> I know you have some nice cabinets at your home with 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 your vignettes in it. And, and uh, moving forward, of of course, we want to hope that our viewers do the same. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a nicer way, much nicer way of uh, than just having the models sit on a shelf or just on a plain vase, and it uh, you know it's a nice way of uh, of giving it a little bit of, of scale and, and adding a bit of an environment for it to, for the vehicle to sit on. So it's yeah. a very nice way of displaying your your, your models, and uh, and as you've seen in the videos, as you've demonstrated, Dave, not not terribly hard to put together and, and you know, to come up with a nice finished product. Yeah, I mean this is only eighteen months of this is eighteen months of, of casual model building this is this yeah. is not um we you know we weren't pressing on this <laughs> you know oh, exactly and um and and displaying models in theaters of war that um you know or rather like this is probably italy and we've talked about this being normandy this probably could be anywhere but based on the jeep sometimes that adds to a, a, a position on the battlefield western front versus eastern front absolutely yeah and um the Green Panther 132 could be anywhere, and the far one probably in the in the conflict with the Russians, based on just that little machine gun that's sitting in the corn there. So little cues to sort of uh, put a tank in, in, in its appropriate place um, are, are sometimes all that you have to do. Yeah. You know, yeah, just add a little bit of scale to it. Mm -hmm. Now there's a there's a difference between a diorama and a vignette and as I understand it I think really a vignette more is doesn't really tell necessarily a specific story whereas a diorama is a little bit more involved and by looking at it you can kind of defer uh, a story or infer a story I guess and I think um, uh, you know I think the, when you go to the, the, the model contests usually they have separate categories for dioramas and vignettes and that's usually the distinction that they, uh, they make yeah and it's um like you and I have spoken about, just putting, I, I think this all starts with the Europeans, um, the way that they display their models. You know, I brought this back probably from Drone at World Expo and, and um, you know, just seeing how beautiful all the tanks looked, not on a white tablecloth, but, you know, in this sort of setting. And it's just sort of... Uh, it's just sort of led to this. I mean, I was in Girona, I think, in 2010 or 2009 or somewhere in there. Trish and I went back to the World Expo in Italy, and it was just, it was the same. Magic. It was magic. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, going to the U.S. Nationals, there's there's a little less of this, but, but hopefully with your help and mine, um, just to encourage guys to say that, you know, if you're bringing your models out, um, and and also too, I don't think any of these tanks are anchored to their bases. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to go to a IPMS type of thing here yeah. in North America, and you just want to enter the model without getting involved in whether it's a vignette or a diorama, right? Absolutely. Uh, IPMS does have particular rules, and I, I think that you know that going in. So don't try to get points on your model at a model contest because you have a. A brick wall and some grass. That's, that's true. Yeah, if you if you're just entering into one of the, the armored categories, for example, they're only going to evaluate the model. They're not supposed to look at the base that it's sitting on. Right? So, yeah. So, so that's let, something so, to remember as well. Yeah. Ease their mind. Don't even bring your groundwork to a setting of the model contest where they don't. They and and don't get me wrong. They don't frown on this kind of display, but it can get shifted into different categories. You know, uh, vignette type categories. And, yeah. And, groundwork type categories but like I say Dave you, you know going in they've 
lay down their ground rules and, and, and you and I as spectators and, and, and maulers attending those shows, you just follow the rules and you go along with it. You don't antagonize anybody. No, that's, that's the last thing. <laughs> that's the last thing. <laughs> that never works out. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just going to crash and burn at that point. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> World Expo um, is going to return in 2020 over in... Absolutely. Over in Amsterdam, or just outside Amsterdam, about 50 miles. And uh, you and I, I think, have already talked about going and making a trip of it. It's a long way away. It's, it's 24 months from now. But, um, you know, you uh, you go there with the expectation of seeing 500 models all on settings like this. And it's spectacular. Well, it's, and the World Expo, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even think the one World Expo in Chicago this year. Or back in 2017. And... Uh, it was uh, it was phenomenal. Like I, I, I can't wait to go to the the one in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, there's the level of work and the figures and the models uh, just way up there. Just one of the best shows I've ever been to. Really, really, really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, it was, and it's um, thanks to all the maulers out there that have, that have uh, you know, like I say, the Europeans probably are the ones that blaze the trail for having them displayed like this. And hopefully, you and I are gonna. And others. I, I'm not suggesting for one minute that um, there's nobody over in North America doing no, this. No, of course not, there yeah. are. There's hundreds of people. But Mike Rinaldi, for instance, one of the best maulers in North America, I, I've never seen his tanks underneath a piece of groundwork. So yeah, he focused you know, more more on the on the finish, the painting, and the finishing, the weathering of the model, right? So. Yeah. So so it's just another way of, of of having these sit in your cabinets at home. Um, they take up a little more space, of course, um, but nevertheless, they're, they're, it's a beautiful way of explaining them. They're well worth, it. well worth the extra effort. Yeah. All right, Dave, well, listen, we have other filming to do, modeling yes. vignette. Lots uh, to get to. Modeling stories to tell, and um, uh, as I've told you guys in the past, in 2018, Dave and I are going to focus sort of on the Allied um, movements towards Berlin. Um, we started Dave with this beautiful Sherman and, and uh, Elliot with his figure. And um, so my next project is going to be one of the King Tigers knocked out, you know, sort of uh, September, October of, of, of 2000, uh, to 1944. And I think you're doing a, a Brumbar in yep. 45, are you not? Yeah, I'm doing a Brum Brumbar uh, in Hungary uh, in, in, uh, in 1945, the, the Nutimia kit. Uh, and I think we, we showed it uh, in one of the previous episodes, so we'll be continuing on with that. We'll be doing the, uh, the painting, the modulation, the camo on it, uh, and then take it through all the weathering processes. So yeah, it'll be a complete, uh, complete overview. Yeah, and then you and I, being a, a Brumbar, it, 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 like like these vehicles, um, you know, you you do the groundwork to match the type of vehicle. So what we'll do is we'll we'll take sort of a. Oh, like I like I like to take box art like this and, uh, and back to the vignette part I mean this is a pretty simple vignette but but it's effective maybe not the smile on his face but he has uh, unfortunately knocked out an allied tank here a Sherman tank so um, but just a little bit of box art like this can fire up the juices for, oh, lots for of moving solution. forward on these so um, using all this sort of uh, visual on here Probably, probably, or where are we going to go with, where we're going with the Brumbar is is sort of a, a setting like this. So, anyway, lots to look forward to coming up shortly. And uh, for one of the first things I'm going to do is talk about a, a tax Zimmerick and how to apply that onto. Um, it's a great product. Yeah. Yeah, onto uh, the Tamiya King Tiger. So, Excellent. I'm going to get started on that, and you and I'll get together shortly. Absolutely. Sounds like a day. All right. Likewise. Thanks. Thank you.